SOS, the Universal Distress Signal, stands for nothing. That's right, SOS in fact is not an abbreviated form. The invention of radio in late 1890s proved to be very valuable for maritime communications as they could now send a distress signal instead of having to use flags, bells or foghorns. But in the absence of international regulations, different organizations developed their own practices. For example, the letters CQD transmitted in Morse code was one of the candidates for the distress signal. But in 1905, Germany was the first country to introduce today's universal distress signal, which was in fact specified as a continuous Morse code sequence of three dots, three dashes, three dots, with no mention of any alphabetical equivalent. This unique pattern of dots and dashes was internationally adopted shortly after, which corresponded to the letters SOS. In American Morse code, three dashes stood for number five, so in a few cases in the US, the distress signal was informally referred to as S5S. Of course, in popular usage, SOS has since been associated with phrases such as save our soul or save our ship. But these are post interpretations of the short beeps and the long beeps of the Morse code. In fact, SOS is not the only sequence of characters that represent three dots, three dashes and three dots in Morse code. IWB, VZE, 3B, and V7 form equivalent sequences, but SOS was the easiest to remember and was therefore adopted. SOS is one of the many phrases that has made its way from maritime or military usage into popular culture. Ever wondered where the term blockbuster came from? The literal meaning of the term blockbuster may have been attributed to the large number of people standing in lines that went around the block from the movie theaters. But in fact, it originates from the aerial bombs capable of destroying whole city blocks, which were called blockbuster bombs. These high capacity bombs were some of the largest conventional bombs used in World War II by the Royal Air Force, ranging in weight from 2,000 to 12,000 pounds. But publicists in the early 1940s drew on people's familiarity with the blockbuster bombs to draw an analogy with the blockbuster bomb's huge impact, which is now used to refer to movies that have commercial success with flying colors, which is yet another example of a phrase that has made its way into our everyday conversations. If you've ever come through a situation with flying colors, you owe that description to the armies and navies of the 17th century. Even though today, doing something with flying colors usually implies achieving undoubted success, the earlier usage of the phrase referred to avoiding defeat rather than necessarily being triumphant. The colors referred to flags and banners, and to have one's flag captured in war was a sign of a great defeat. But if one could leave the battlefield with their flags still flying, that was a signal that they had not been defeated. But during wars, sometimes soldiers had to bite the bullet, literally. It is commonly believed that before the invention of anesthetics, wounded soldiers would literally bite down on a bullet just to cope with the pain of a surgical procedure. In the absence of leather pads, bullets made for the next best impromptu battlefield alternative as they were made from lead, which was somewhat malleable, so it was less likely that the soldiers would break their teeth. That said, the phrase actually seems to have originated from soldiers biting on a bullet when being flogged. Either way, biting on a bullet was not a pleasant experience. But one of the most fascinating things about the... Whoa. Brought me with that.